And, and I, I think the best way to think about it is um, the virus is indifferent to what it is we want and desire to do, right? The, the virus is the one that dictates the timeline here and it dictates what we do. And, uh, and, I, and I do think as we learn more about it, we understand those activities we can do that are safer than others, right? Uh, there are some things that we've learned. The, the idea of wearing masks, I think now it's, it's very well established that in those places where people are wearing masks everywhere, there's less transmission that occurs, a lot of times below the ability for the virus to even replicate and, and, and proceed. Outdoor activities uh, are, are looking to be significantly safer than those activities where you spend a lot of time indoors with the same group of people and somebody might have uh, the virus. And so uh, I think you know, we, can, we can lean on that, that data that we are learning, those facts that we are learning as we move forward. But you need to pay attention to the behaviors that we know improve safety. Social distancing, maintaining distance from others, wearing a mask, right? There are, there are lots of things that we can do. Limit your time exposures to others. Um, there are things that we can all do to improve the safety for ourselves and for those around us. Mike, you talk a lot about dose and time, and I think that's pretty simple. I think that makes it easy for people to understand. Dose meaning that if you're close to someone who has the virus, and again, as Chris said, they may not be having symptoms yet, so they don't know. If you're very close to that person and that person coughs or sneezes on you, that's an intensive dose. You could get COVID from that. But if you've got a, a mask on, they have a mask on, then that's protected. You're outside, um, so there's more air that's circulating. So dose is the intensity of being close together. The air is close together, not a lot of circulation. The time is how long are you doing that for? And so when you, those two things come together and, and you think of the situations you're in, that's what you want to avoid. That's where your greatest risk is of, of the virus being transmitted and you catching it. So I really do think that time and dose makes good sense that people can relate to. Yeah, so as we enter these new phases of reopening, I just encourage everybody to please stay safe. Yes. Stay safe and keep these things in your mind. Keep following those safe tactics. Yeah, and I hear a lot of people talking about, well, we're not gonna wear masks and we're just gonna go out and do things the way we normally did because that's the way we get herd immunity. And uh, there, there is no herd immunity here. We're not even close. Um, you know, the, the nearly 1,000 people that we tested here at the hospital that would be the highest risk, we had less than 2% have antibodies. And re yeah, remember, many of the viruses that we have dealt with as a human species for, throughout our existence, measles, chicken pox, we never achieved herd immunity with those right. viruses until we had vaccines. Mm -hmm. exactly. And you have vaccine-mediated herd immunity. So it's very unlikely as a it's society, amazing. by being around one another, we're going to achieve any sense of herd immunity to the coronavirus, this novel yes. coronavirus, um, without, without the uh, emergence of a vaccine that assists us in getting there. So yeah, it's a very dangerous, I think, uh, mm -hmm. outlook when I hear that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dr. McDermott, Dr. Newman, um, some folks are wondering about the development of a vaccine. Uh, do you know of any advancements? Yeah, go ahead. yeah there, there, there's, there are a lot of uh, different companies and uh, um, working on this right now uh, faster than has ever occurred in human history after a, a new pathogen like this. Um, you know, I've just recently heard Anthony Fauci and some others uh, talk that are optimistic at the very early phases of these vaccine trials. Uh, I think optimistically, if everything goes perfectly for one of these uh, vaccines, uh, I'm hearing probably next summer is when uh, they may be available uh, readily uh, for folks. Uh, I think those that have been hopeful for a fall vaccine, I think that's, that's probably highly unlikely. So I think this is gonna be with us for a while, something we're gonna have to deal with for a while. And I think best case scenario uh, is, uh, would be sometime next summer that we just begin vaccinating. It's just the you know, uh, best knowledge we have at this point.